In Jesus' name, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Exactly, and today is a big day. We have Super Bowl Sunday happening this afternoon. Many of you might be uh, gearing up and, and getting ready for Super Bowl parties and such. And then also this week we have Valentine's Day coming upon us on Monday, which is always a fun time because it is an opportunity for us to remember each other and to share God's love in that moment. Absolutely. Well, what a wonderful opportunity to come together and worship. So with that, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
I invite you now into our time of confession and forgiveness. God, we hear your invitation to us. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy burdened. I will give you rest. We acknowledge our soul's need for rest and quiet nourishment. We lay down our burdens. We acknowledge our soul's need of connection with you. We confess our tendency to overlook rest as a necessary part of soul and self-care. We confess our pride in thinking that our work is so important that we may not set it down. We confess our readiness to believe that what we do determines our worth. We confess our obsession with productivity, results, measurable progress. We confess our tendency to forget that it is in you that we live and move and have our being and that your love is better than life. We ask now for mind, body, spirit, and whole person nourishment. For rest and resurrection, for new life, for healing and consolation of our souls. We ask for help in managing our time and our activities so that our infillings keep up with our outpourings. Where we have overspent ourselves, refresh us. Where we have misplaced our priorities, rearrange us. Where we have said yes when we should have said no, remind us. We thank you for meaningful work, for blessings and burdens. We thank you for rest. May we become present to our great need for daily bread, the presence of Christ in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news, the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own works, but through Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Well, good morning, kids. Welcome to our children's message and our time that we can kind of spend together with you at this moment. Today is um, the day before Valentine's Day, and so I thought it would be important or fun for us to um, read a story out of the Bible that speaks to love, okay? And Valentine's, Pastor Eric, is, is all about sharing love with each other through a, a card or a gift or flowers or things like that. Some of you kids might be prepared be preparing um, valentine boxes for school and, and getting ready to share some of uh, the valentines with your friends at school. So this morning I want to read to you a Bible story. It's coming from 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 through 12. Let's listen closely to what it has to say to us. After Jesus rose and ascended to heaven, many people heard the good news and believed in Jesus. The first believers began to form churches that met in their homes. They ate together, they shared stories about Jesus, and they talked about God's love. Sometimes they read a letter sent by another believer, such as this letter, and it reads like this, Dear friends, let's love each other. Love is from God, and God is love. When we live in love, we live in God, and God's love lives in us. God sent Jesus to show us how big God's love is. Jesus loved everyone, babies, grown-ups, boys, girls, happy people, sad people, even the people who hurt and killed him. Jesus died for you and for me. He gave up his life to show us how unselfish love is. You can't see God, but when you love others, you can share God's love. Love is how God shows up in our lives and helps us know who God is. Love gives us strength and courage so that we don't feel afraid. God loved us first. We can learn to love. If you love God, love your brother, love your sister, love your whole family, and all 
of God's people. Signed, a follower of Jesus. The people from the church finished reading the letter. They understood being God's church was all about love. They were excited to show others how love to love like God. Wasn't it a beautiful story? Pastor Eric, to love is to show God's love, to care about other people. And so Valentine's is a beautiful way for us to share God's love because God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus for us. Isn't that a beautiful story? It's wonderful. And I think of a couple things is Jesus teaches us about love during this time of year, and especially through Lent, which is coming up. But we think of Jesus' greatest commandment, to love God with our whole heart, mind, and soul, and love our neighbors Mm -hmm. as ourselves. I think this Valentine's Day, and when people bring treats to school to share with others, that's an opportunity to share our love for our neighbors, that we care for them. Exactly. So, Pastor Eric, I have for you a Valentine's card. Oh, that is so nice. And it even came... With a dove piece of candy. It does. Go ahead, open it. I want you to read it to everybody. Let me see what it says. Ah, so nice. I don't know if you can see this, but it says, Happy Valentine's Day, and you open it up. Jesus loves you, and so do I, from Alan. That is so nice. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I love um, sharing God's love, not only with you, but with all of you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for sending your son Jesus here, showing us how much you loved us so that we, in turn, can love others. Help us to remember that as we go through each and every day, especially on Valentine's Day. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. God bless, and we'll see you next Sunday. Our first reading for this Sunday is coming from Jeremiah 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and they shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when it heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of the drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then when Christ has not been raised, and if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testify of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life 
only we have hoped in Christ, we are all of people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the twelfth and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him. For power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. A couple weeks ago, we led our confirmation students in an activity that emphasized the difference between the world and the kingdom of God Jesus teaches us about. From a perspective connected to the world in which we live, we asked them what skills or qualities would they want on their dream basketball team. We chose basketball because in one way or another, many of us here in Pelican either like to play or cheer on those who do. Myself and my family included, as we experienced our eldest basketball tournament here in Pelican this past weekend, playing on behalf of the Vikings. So again, from a perspective connected to the world in which we live, we ask them what skills or qualities they would want present on their dream basketball team. Here is how they answered. And they did a great job, by the way. They talked about good ball handling, good shooting, good post underneath the basket, trying to get a rebound. Good height, something that I don't particularly have or didn't inherit. Fortunately, my wife is tall, so my kids have a chance. Good sportsmanship. People who are fast, smart, good passing. Good free throw shooter. We had this part of the discussion, Alan, sharing his Westby family basketball tradition and knowledge, said you win games with free throws. So we discussed how important that was. Strong, good at defense. In a way, they described the next Pelican state basketball championship team. Next, we asked our confirmation students from a perspective connected to the world, What skills or qualities do they not want 
on their dream basketball team. And here is how they answer. Someone with low stamina or laziness doesn't seem to really care about the game. Not interested in that. Horrible basketball IQ, low strength, no bounce, no touch around the rim. Someone who's a cheater, someone who is slow, someone who can't catch, maybe fumbles the ball when it's passed to them, someone who's a bad team player, someone who's selfish, wants to hold onto the ball and score all the points themselves, bad defense, someone who is scared, someone with bad execution, someone who is very inflexible. In a way, they describe the skills and qualities that will not help us win the next Pelican Basketball State Championship. To complete this exercise and emphasize what Jesus is teaching all of us about the kingdom of God, which is very much different than the ways of the world, we asked our confirmation students to list out who from Jesus' teaching on the Beatitudes is included in the blessed category from our gospel reading. And here is how they answered. People who are kind. Everyone. People who have respect. People who have empathy. Are willing to listen and try to be there for someone who is experiencing pain and suffering. People who are compassionate, people who are positive, and people who are courageous. A couple of additions we discussed as a class included who Jesus specifically listed in his teaching from the Sermon on the Mount or the Sermon on the Plain connected to the Beatitudes. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. And then we ask them to list out who from Jesus' teachings is included in the woe category from our gospel reading. This part of our discussion, by the way, became very serious as we reflected on the responses, which include the rich, people who are full, people who are full of themselves, People who accuse the unrighteous. People who hate. People who exclude. People who lie. So you may be asking yourself, what was the point of our confirmation teaching exercise? Or what is the point of Jesus' teachings on the Beatitudes that includes list of those who are blessed or characterized as woes? And there are many many answers. The one answer I invite all of us to focus on today is connected to one word, trust. As we recognize trusting in God is one way to acknowledge God's blessings in our lives connected to our faith. Let's reflect on the word trust from a possible experience of someone who is poor and hungry who Jesus was referring to in his teachings on the Beatitudes per insights from Bishop Howard K. Gregory. The poor and the hungry know the reality of their situation. They are totally dependent on God and therefore are disposed to entrust themselves to God's care and mercy, which is the foundation of grace and a right relationship with God. From this perspective, it's their trust in God that provides them blessings and not worldly possessions that they don't have that could give them a false sense of security. Let's now reflect on the word trust from a possible experience of someone who is rich. The rich, on the other hand, are disposed to take comfort in themselves and their resources, thereby finding it more difficult to trust themselves to the mercy and grace of God. 
Jesus' teachings called the Beatitudes invite each of us to ask ourselves, where do we place our trust? Do we place our trust in ourselves and our possessions connected to this world? Or do we place our trust in Jesus, his teachings on the kingdom of God and the word of God we heard read aloud this morning? I say again, where do we place our trust? Do we place our trust in ourselves and our possessions connected to the temporary world in which we experience? Or do we place our trust in Jesus, his teachings on the eternal kingdom of God and the word of God we heard read aloud this morning? Alan and I experience this reality of trusting in God, consistent with Jesus' teachings on the Beatitudes, quite often when we are invited to share sacred moments with those who may be experiencing death and dying connected to our community of faith. Please know it is an honor and privilege for us to be invited to do so and not the other way around. The end of someone's life, time and again, Alan and I reflect on how people find comfort, how people find strength, how people find peace through their trust in God, their faith, and in the word of God that nourishes them during a time of need. Consistent with scripture, we heard read from the prophet Jeremiah today that states, blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. Shall not fear when heat comes and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit. At the end of someone's life, people don't find comfort in trusting in their past athletic accomplishments. At the end of someone's life, people don't find strength by trusting in how much money they presently have. At the end of someone's life, people don't find peace by trusting in their career achievements. It's clear when someone is experiencing death and dying, obstacles or obstructions between their trust and faith in God can fade away. And God's blessings for each of us become more easily realized. I have no doubt that if you ask one of our congregation care team members, they would share very similar experiences when they visit people from our faith community who aren't able to make it to worship who are homebound, who may be lonely, who may reside at the assisted living facility, the nursing home or the memory care unit located here in our town of Pelican Rapids. These essential members of our faith community share with each of us how they trust and have faith in God and how that is of the most importance to them during this season of their life and how that's accompanied them each and every day of their faith journey all the way up to that point. As you navigate through life this week, I encourage all of us to reflect on the Beatitudes. Jesus teaches all of us and to remember to not forget about the poor, to not forget about the hungry, to not forget about those who are weeping with sadness, because Jesus calls us to orient ourselves towards those in need. And when we do so, we more fully realize God's blessings, which are connected to the trust we place in Jesus and not in ourselves or our worldly possessions that, in the end, Do not matter. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Gracious God, blessed are those who trust in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessings into the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by the streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect the woodlands after forest fires. God of grace, hear our prayer. Search the hearts of those who govern that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and this planet. Sustain truth-tellers, social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace, hear our prayer. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation, Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who may be struggling with illnesses. We lift before you this day Artis Johnson, Brody Setter, Luke Bonfelt, Dave McDonald, Mimi Urig, Steve Anderson, Terry Sorum, Carol Kuvas, Jim King, Dave Husaby, Anna Mae Fawson, Denise Schmitzny, and all others whom we lift before you from our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Renew this congregation in our shared mission as we plan and dream for the future that you are preparing. Inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministries and partnerships. God of grace, hear our prayer. Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who have lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us all embrace each other in Christ's reconciling peace. God's peace, Pastor Eric. Peace be with you, Alan. God's peace be with each of you. At this time, we will give thanks for the offering we receive to proclaim Christ through word and deed here in Pelican Rapids, Minnesota, the state, and throughout the rest of the world. Let us pray. Merciful God, 
we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Friends, as we come to a close of this worship service, before we send you off, we have one more announcement that we want to share with you this morning. Next Sunday uh, will be kind of a special Sunday. Pastor Eric and I have uh, have been relieved of our duties for a Sunday, and uh, we're going to be doing things special for ourselves. And off the hook. Has a group has, has agreed to come in and lead worship next Sunday. And so we look forward to their ministry as, as they come in and proclaim the gospel to you through their music and through their words. And it's wonderful because it's Lee Brenna and his mm-hmm. team will be coming in. So we have a familiar face and a familiar voice. And he'll be leading not only the virtual worship service, the indoor worship service, and he's even hardy enough to lead worship outside. So no matter... What way will we are worshiping off the hook in their ministry to come in um, to lead worship for that Sunday? And we're excited for them to be here and serve in that way. So my friends, as you go out into the day, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.
Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. See you next week. God bless.